Hey there, so in this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to read data from a file. We'll also talk about how to take input from the user, right? If, if a user of the application types something in their keyboard, how do you take that in a computer program and do something interactive with it? We're gonna look at that right now in this lesson. And we're also gonna learn about exception handling if we have time for it towards the end. So let's first create our project. We're gonna right click here and go to new type in select Java project and type in processing files. Okay, hit finish. And in here, we're going to select the source, click new class. And we're going to call this class application. And this class is actually going to contain our entry point for our application. So we're going to need the main method defined in this class. So hit finish. And here is our main method. Now you've seen system.out. You've seen system dot out. If you click here, notice it has a particular data type. It's called print stream. This is the data type of this variable, and this variable belongs in system class. Well, there is another kind of variable in the system class. Instead of system dot out, I could do system dot in. Okay, and if you control click in, it will take you to that variable. And this is of type input stream. Okay, this is actually used for taking data from the user into the computer program. Notice the standard input stream. The stream is already open and ready to supply input data. You don't have to get into the details of all this fancy terminology such as stream for all practical purposes. You just need to understand that this in variable can be used to take in data from the user into the application. So let me show you exactly how that works. We're going to need something called a scanner. So I'm going to define that here, scanner, and I'm going to name it input is equal to new scanner. And we're going to give this thing system.in. Okay, so what is the scanner thing? Well, right now this code is not compiling because we haven't imported the libraries of scanner. If you hover your mouse over this type, and notice it says that the scanner cannot be resolved to a type, so we need to import it by clicking here. And this is a Java library in the util package. And if you click on the scanner class, this has all of the methodologies to be able to read data from the input. And you can also read files. So let's go back to the application class, and we are going to pass in to the scanner's uh, constructor this argument this data system dot in and what was in again in was input stream so if you click on the constructors definition here notice that it accepts an input stream so we can give it anything that is an of input stream and uh, we will be able to instantiate an instance of scanner okay and that's what this input variable is this variable will now have the ability to be able to read data from uh, the keyboard, and I'll show you exactly how that works. So down here on the second line, I can do input dot next line, and then assign this to a variable of type string, and I'll say entered text. So whatever information the user enters, that's going to be captured by this dot next line and assigned to this variable called entered text, and then I can print. I can print that information that the user entered on this line, okay? Um, and let me just put a let me just put a print line statement right above this line here, and I'll just say enter some text, okay? Save this file and then hit play, and notice that it prompts us enter some text. That's this line right here. It's moved on to this line, but it's waiting for us to give it some data. Notice that this red terminate box, this is still running. It's not grayed out yet. That means the application is running. It's waiting for input. So this dot next line method is waiting for us to give it some data, and only then this line will be executed completely. Okay, so this part is waiting for us to give some data, and that, that information that we pass in is going to be assigned to this entered text variable and then it's going to print that out. So let me enter some sentence, some some data. Here is some data. Hit enter and notice that it printed out exactly what we typed. Okay? And of course the red box is gone. 
right? This program has ended because it uh, took the input, assigned it to this variable, and then printed it out right here on this line, and the program is over. So using the scanner class, we were able to take input from the user, and this could be pretty handy to create interactive applications. Simple interactive applications, but uh, it does allow for some interactivity. And I can wrap this in a loop as well. So I could do, let's define a variable of i, and as long as i is less than or equal to three, this is going to continue to increment i, and we're gonna wrap this in this loop here. This is gonna run four times, from zero all the way down to three. That's zero, one, two, and three. Four times this information will be run. It's gonna ask us to enter data four times. So let's hit play, and here is the first prompt. I'm just gonna put some, some data, hit enter again, and it printed some data, and I'm gonna just, it's not very good at taking the cursor where it needs to be, so we can click here, and I'll say, here is some more data. Hit enter, and take your cursor here, hello there, and then one more time, this is the fourth time prompting us, and I'm just gonna write blah, blah, blah. Hit enter, and there you go, the program has terminated. Notice the terminate button is now grayed out. The program ended. So this executed four times because of this loop. So it allowed for some interactivity. So you can use the scanner to take input from the user, but you can also use it to read data from files. Okay. Let me create a file in this project. Go to new, click on file, and I'm just going to create a basic text file. I'll, I'll just call it myfile.txt. And I'll just uh, put some random information in this file, okay? Blah. Whatever, just three lines of, uh, of information there. And I can read this file using the scanner. Let me show you how to do that. Comment out this code. Just like we imported this scanner library, there is another kind of library that we need to import to be able to read files, and that's called file class. So I'm going to create a variable of type file, and we're going to do new file, and then pass in the string uh, name of this file, and it's called myfile.txt, okay? So hover your mouse over this uh, file type, and notice that it's saying file cannot be resolved to a type because we haven't imported this library. This library belongs in the java.io package, okay? So let's click there and notice that up here, it imported the class that we need. Now, if you're brave enough, you can check out the code in this file class. There's a lot to look at, but um, you can you know, journey on that towards the later half of the course when you understand Java more. Let me close all of these other, other classes that we don't need. So this class allows the ability to be able to read and write data to files. So just like how we use the scanner uh, input right here to take data from the user using system in, I can actually take data from this file, okay? So let's pass that in here to the argument of this method, to this scanner. Uh, hover your mouse here and it's saying add throws declaration. And this is about exceptions. We're gonna uh, take a look at that later, but basically notice it's saying unhandled exception type file not found exception. And it's saying that, hey, if, if, if the file is not found, if, if you're saying that this is the file name and if I'm not able to find it, I'm gonna throw an error. And to allow you to do this, I want to make sure that you catch that error, or at least let the let whoever is using your program know that there is an error. So we just have to we can just add throws declaration for now, and uh, we'll we'll look into exceptions in a little bit. So now this is going to allow us to read the file using the scanner. Hover your mouse here, click on scanner while having your control key pressed, and notice that this is the other constructor of the scanner. We saw scanner constructor using the input stream. Well, this is another constructor of the scanner class that accepts a file, okay? And going back here, now now that we have this input variable with the ability to read data from files, I can create a while loop, while input dot has next line. Here's another method. This should return a, a Boolean. So click here, notice that it has a, it returns a Boolean data type, so true or false. So if the there is a next line in the file, it's going to return true. So while it's true that there is an, another line in the file to process, we're gonna take that input.nextLine and we're gonna assign it to 
a variable of type string. I'll just call it line. All right, it's going to take that and assign it to this variable called line, and then I could just print out the data, that line. And then when we're done with reading the entire file, it's a good idea to close that scanner. So we can do input.close and click on this and notice that this method is just saying closes this scanner. So let me close that. I'm just showing you the underlying classes that do this while we code this up. So hopefully it's not too confusing, but I want you to be typing this code along with me and experimenting with it, okay? So there you go. Now if I run this application, it's going to print out the data in the file here on the console. So let's hit play and notice here is the the junk data that I had in that file. Whatever I inserted there, it um, printed it to the screen. I can add more details in here, such as here is some more data, here is some more, all right, and all of those lines, hit play, all of those lines are gonna be printed, okay? Now you might be wondering, what is this file not found exception? Uh, let me get rid of this and notice that it's gonna give an error. It's saying that, hey, I'm about to scan for a file. What if it doesn't exist? That's why this error is showing up. Hover your mouse here, and it's saying unhandled exception type file not found. It has two quick fixes. One is add a throws declaration. That's what we selected before. The other fix is surround with try catch. So if we click on this, this is going to surround uh, this piece of code with the try and catch. Typically, we don't just surround this thing with try and catch. We surround everything that has to do with file processing in the try and catch. So I'll explain to you exactly what that is in a, in a moment. So let me just cut this out and put this right here outside of, of, the, uh, of the code. And I'm going to take this catch portion, right, which is from here. I'm going to put this outside here. And um, this try is going to wrap around where we're doing file processing. Now you can press Control shift f and that's going to format this a little bit better so you can understand what's going on. Uh, so here is the try block. And what this basically means is, hey, I'm going to try to do all of the, the instructions that you're giving me here. But if I find an error along the way, then it's going to jump to the catch section. And this catch is saying file not found exception. All right, file not found exception. If, for example, the file that we are giving it, if this doesn't exist, then it's going to jump into this part of the code. It's not going to do anything here. As soon as it runs this line and it's not able to find the file that we are claiming exists, if it's not able to find that for whatever reason, it's going to jump into this catch portion and not execute anything else. Uh, it's going to print the error to the screen. So hit play here. It's able to find this file and it does what it's supposed to, but if I rename this, let me rename this, go to refactor and rename, and I'll call it my file changed. Hit OK. And now, if you hit play, notice that it's giving that exception. As soon as it gets to this line, it's not able to find it. It's going to jump over into this catch block, and notice the exception that it's throwing. File not found exception. Okay, And that's what this thing is designed for. So right now, whatever the exception that's being assigned to this variable and then through this variable we're basically printing out whatever whatever is there instead of invoking this print stack trace uh, which is a, a method on this class on this file not found exception class I can actually print something else file not found all right and instead of this print uh, stack trace method being invoked it's just going to run this I, I'm commenting out this line right here. So it's just going to print this because it's not able to find my file. Let's hit play and notice that it's saying file not found. So this is referred to as exception handling. When something that you think may go wrong in the application during runtime while your application is running, when there is a possibility of something going wrong, for example, the disk drive not being available or losing connection to the internet for whatever reason, uh, we want to make sure we wrap our code in these try-catch blocks so that we can uh, properly handle the exceptions. And the exception, the word exception, all it really means is an error. If some error happens, that's all an exception means. 
and we can define our own methods that throw exceptions. So for example, let me define a method out here. We're going to call it public. As a matter of fact, let me, let me define it in another class. We're going to right click and go to new class and I'm, I'm going to call it my file utils. Okay. We don't need the main method. We only have one starting point of the application, and that's the application class. I'm going to define another method. It's going to be of type int, and it's going to be called subtract 10 from larger number, and it accepts some argument. We're going to give it the variable or parameter number, and it's going to return the value of subtracting the number 10 from the number that was passed in. Okay, what it's supposed to return is number minus 10. What we can do is make this method throw exceptions. So at the end of the method signature, right, at the end of the method signature, I can type throws exception. And now this method is going to throw an exception uh, if something happens. And I'll explain to you what that is. So for example, if the number that's passed in, if the number is less than 10, Right? If the number is less than 10, then I want it to throw an exception. All right? And this new keyword is being used because guess what? An exception is a class. So we're throwing a new instance of that class. Uh, so whatever code calls this method, that code will be aware, okay, you know what? This method may throw an exception. If the user enters a number that is less than, less than the number 10, this method may throw an exception. And what exception will it throw? Well, we can uh, we can give an argument to this class. Uh, control click this and notice that it takes you to the class definition of exception.class and the argument that's passed in here is, a, is just a message, okay? And that's what's going to be printed to the screen if, if the number that was passed into this method was less than 10. So I'm just going to say the number passed was smaller than 10. Okay, so wherever I invoke this method, let's go back to the application class, wherever I invoke uh, my file utils dot, okay, because this method is uh, not a static method, it belongs to the instance of my file utils, so we need to create an instance variable. And I'll call it my util is equal to new my file utils and now using this instance I can do dot oh hang on a minute I'm actually outside of I'm actually outside of the main method remember in Java everything happens inside of methods right now I'm not even in an, any method so I need to be inside of a method to try that and I can do my util dot um, subtract 10 from larger number and let's pass in the number for example 15 okay so notice it's uh, giving an error. Hover your mouse over here and it's saying unhandled exception, type exception. So we have two options. We could either throw the uh, exception or surround it with a try catch. So let's click on surround with try catch and notice that it surrounds it with the try block. And in case, in case there's this method throws an exception, it's going to jump into this block right here. So let's hit play. Firstly, this is just going to return the value of 15 minus 10. It's not going to do anything with it. So let me just, let's print out the value that, that gets returned by invoking that method so that we get something on the screen. So hit play and notice that it does return 5. It's printing 5. If I make this less than 10, let's make it 9. Now this, this method is going to throw an exception, right? It's not even going to execute completely this try block. It's going to jump into the catch block and say, okay, this method is throwing an exception. We need to catch it. And that's when it's going to jump into this block. So let's hit play and notice, boom, here's the exception. And the, and the message is right here. The number passed was smaller than 10. That's the message that I assigned that instance of exception. Okay. Here in my utils, um, the instance of the exception class, right? The message that I passed to its constructor, that's what's going to be thrown, okay, to whatever class that calls it if there's a violation. So since number can't be less than 10, 
when we pass a 9, it's violating. So it's going to jump into this part of the code. It's going to jump into this part of the code and throw this exception. And we want to make sure that we are, we are able to catch it. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. We looked at the uh, scanner to read data from the user. When the user types something in the keyboard, the scanner class has the ability to be able to uh, do stuff with that data. Uh, and it also has the ability to read data from files. This file class, uh, this has various methods on it that allow for processing files. So we're creating an, a new instance of file, and then this object is passed into the scanner, and the scanner is then able to do dot has next line, and then it basically returns each line of the file, and then we're able to print it. And then finally we close that scanner, right? So we looked at the scanner for inputting data into the computer as well as reading data from files. And then we also looked at the try and catch, you know, exception handling. Now, one more thing we can do is define our own exceptions. Back in the my file utils, yeah, I'm throwing my own exception, but this class exception is a part of the Java language. It's already been defined, but I can create my own exception class. Let me show you what that looks like. Uh, let's define a class, public class, and I'm going to call it foo runtime exception. Okay, and uh, it should extend, it should extend the exception class. All right. So again, what was in extends? That was for inheritance. So whatever functionality is in this class is the parent. It's going to be uh, accessible by the child, okay? And remember to keep your class names with a capital. First letter should always be capital. So this is my randomly defined exception. I called it foo runtime exception. And now instead of just throwing a new exception, I can throw this. Like that. And hover your mouse here. What is it saying? It's saying the constructor my files utils full runtime exception with a string argument is undefined. So again, if, if this is a child of this class, then and you're saying that this is this, this kind of object, then of course the way to create an instance of this should be the same for this guy, right? So we need to define a new constructor for specifically for this class. We could do public and then pass in string uh, message and whatever uh, exception has for the let's look for the exceptions uh, message what does it do well it just calls super right so we could do the same thing let me just copy that as is and just do this and now this will behave essentially almost identical well exactly identical to what this is but we've defined our own exception here so instead of it being printed java.lang.exception it's actually going to print a uh, full runtime exception so Let's go back to the application, go down, and now with our own customary exception defined in the my, util, my file utils class, and this method is throwing that exception, it's going to actually print to the screen what, uh, what exception was executed. So let's hit play, and notice here you go. It's saying uh, foo runtime exception. And that's defined in my file utils, and this is the message that we passed to that exception the number passed was smaller than 10. So just like how you define classes, you can define your own exception classes, okay? Now the Java libraries have a vast collection of exceptions. And typically you don't really need to be defining your own exceptions, but when you do, when you do, it's best practice to actually create a new package. Right now, just to show you, uh, I defined this exception in the same class as this, but typically you wanna create a new package and call it, uh, you know, exceptions or something, and uh, give some extra details in the beginning. I'll, we'll just say com dot mtos dot exceptions, just so that there is no conflict with the exceptions that are already in the Java libraries. So hit finish, and let's create that class. We called it foo runtime exception, right? So foo runtime exception, and hit finish and let's just copy the code from here and paste it like that okay hit close here and now 
Of course, since this is in a different package, it's going to want us to import this information, right? So that's why this is not compiling. Hover your mouse here, and it's saying full runtime exception cannot be resolved to a type. And it's saying that we need to import that class that we defined. So let's click that. And now uh, this full runtime exception from this package has been imported in this class, and we can use it now. So going back to application, when we run it, everything is still working as expected. And notice that now the exception that gets printed out is from com.mtos.exceptions.foo runtime exception. All right, and of course, the reason why this message is being printed is because in this method, in the subtract 10 from larger number, we're passing in a number that's supposed to that's actually smaller than 10. So if that's the case, we have logic in this method that says, hey, if the number that you pass in, if that's less than 10, then we need to throw this foo runtime exception. That's why you're seeing this down here. And then going back here, it's saying file not found because I'm passing in the wrong file name here. Uh, we changed the name of the file. It's called my file changed. So let me put that changed. And now the top part is not going to be giving any exception. And it prints the data from the file. And if I change this back to, for example, 12 or something, uh, then we won't see any exceptions in this code occurring. All right, so there was a lot of ground we covered in this in this lesson. Uh, take your time to internalize it. And in the next lesson, I'm going to give you an assignment to try out. We're going to continue on this topic of file processing, reading and writing files. Uh, so stay tuned. I'll see you soon.